If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glister Elf, here with some alternatives for Tarmogoy that can actually be, if done well, more powerful than Tarmogoyf. Now I say alternatives and not replacements. Some of these will be replacements if you need to. These are all more budget than Goyf, which isn't saying much. But I say alternatives because in the case of most of these, their ability to be more powerful than Goyf is contingent upon building around Goyf. So let's start off with a little bit of discussion first. And I should preface this by saying Modern. I'm looking at modern cards here. I'm not looking at Legacy or Commander, etc. I'm not going to be counting Werebear, as awesome as bear arms are. That thing is a human. It's been errated to be a human as well. And I'm not going to be talking about Wild Mongrel, one of my favorite cards from Popper. No, we're just going to be looking at modern cards. So, what makes Tarmogoyf so good? <laughs> well, a few things, at least. Uh, it gets to be awfully powerful, awfully quickly, making it the most efficient two-drop green creature in Magic the Gathering, period. Being able to, on turn two, have a 4-5, even if it's a vanilla 4-5, just makes it huge, makes it powerful. Uh, additionally, it's so easy to splash, not just because of the color. Remember, it's just green and one. That's awesome. Same thing with Snapcaster, same thing with Young Pyromancer, with Dark Confidant, with Stoneforge Mizzet, you get the idea. These cards are so good in part because of how easy they are to splash, and Tarmogoyf shares that, but I'm actually not just talking about color splash. You can fit Tarmogoyf into so many different kinds of strategies. It's best, perhaps, in decks that are most diverse in their strategies, actually. This is why Tarmogoyf sees so much play in Jun or Junk, Obzon, for instance, or builds like those, Zoo. It's because they have so many different kinds of cards. For example, take a, a start out of Jund, where Fetch, so we have a land in, Thoughtseize or Inquisition, so we have a sorcery in, um, or in a deck that has blue, you can Thoughts Coward, you can get the 4-5 <laughs> on the next turn. Uh, and they're running instants, of course, they're running planeswalkers, they're running creatures, they might have artifacts or enchantments even. So this is a powerful card because it fits into so many kinds of decks and ends up being awfully big awfully quickly. That's our standard. That's what we're trying to get. And while the individual cards I'm going to talk about aren't going to be, at least in most cases, maybe one exception, or two, <laughs> aren't going to be as good as Tarmogoyf, they have the potential to be more powerful in terms of power, toughness, and utility. So, with that background, let me give you some honorable mentions first. These are the, it's a trap, cards. These are the ones that you don't actually want to include. I'm going to start off with Noose Constrictor. As much as I like Wild Mongrel, Noose Constrictor is not Wild Mongrel. Um, I mean, well, actually, it, it's better. It has reach. It doesn't change its color, but it gets bigger well enough. It's not playable in Popper, and it just doesn't stay a big creature. Yes, it's good for enabling Madness, for instance, which is relevant and standard, but when we move into Modern, it's better to be able to have that permanent buff rather than just to rush something out. And while you could make this more powerful in Tarmogoyf, it is really a stretch. More powerful on a permanent basis. Having a 6-6 six, six for one turn and then going back to a 2-2 two, two with reach isn't what I'm on about. That's not the level I'm looking at. Next, there's Sylvan Advocate, a 2-3 with Vigilance that becomes a 4-5 with Vigilance that makes your other creatures bigger. This is a trap. It looks good. It's a 2-3, which on its own is above curve, just a little bit, and it has Vigilance, and it has something else on top of that. But six lands, that's the key. By the time that we get to six lands in Modern, that's the point where you're playing Primeval Titan and Scapeshift. Well, Scapeshift is seven, but whatever. You get the idea. We're playing that kind of deck. We're winning the game with six lands. We're not getting out of four five. Even with Vigilance, it's not. It's a trap. It's not quite enough. There might be some decks that can work it in, but I 
can't imagine those decks being more powerful than those that played other options in that slot, more consequential cards. If you want to play a cheap creature, you have bigger options. If you want to play a six mana creature, you have bigger options. This fits in the gray area in the middle in a way that doesn't really satisfy either one. Next we have Rot Shambler, which can definitely get to be more powerful, but it is really a stretch to make this work. Yes, there are combos that can make this infinitely, but well, arbitrarily large. Whenever I say infinite, that means arbitrarily large. You have to pick a number. We're just going to say one million uh, counters. That said, those ways usually involve you winning the game anyway. For example, infinite uh, Kitchen Finks persist triggers. <laughs> We're gaining infinite life, we're going to win the game regardless, the vast majority of the time. In fact, mill some exceptions, but otherwise, yes. Um, or, I'm sure there are others, but just, no, it, it, it's not enough <laughs> to merit it. So while it has a ton of potential to be bigger, the ways that really break it, at least as far as I've seen, and if you know of another way, let me know, would involve you winning the game anyway, or involve you going so far out of your way that it isn't worth it. Now into the actual list. I'm going to go from least close to Tarmogoyf to most close to it, or least powerful to most powerful. Roughly so. We're going to start with a, a semi-honorable mention. It does make the list. And number 10, I guess this is my first, how is this my first top 10 list? Number 10 is Green Wheel Liberator. Hold, hold, so it's a 2-1 that's actually a 4-3. Revolts, obviously in modern, is very easy to get off. So you fetch. Revolt is just when it leaves the battlefield. And so this will be a 4-3 the vast majority of the time. Now, yes, that's going to be smaller than a Tarmogoyf usually is, and it dies to bolts. And Doomblade, yes, the meme, I acknowledge the meme, but it dies to bolt. That said, there's one important point about this card that I think often gets overlooked. Tarmogoyf's biggest weakness, perhaps, well, maybe not biggest weakness now, but historically, has been graveyard hate, especially symmetrical graveyard hate, like Rest in Peace. If Rest in Peace is out, Tarmogoyf is a 0-1 for 2 mana. But this will always be a 4-3 as long as you can trigger Revolt. Even if there's Rest in Peace out, it's not morbid, it's Revolt. It doesn't have to hit the graveyard, it simply has to leave the battlefield. And so in that way, this can be sort of an insurance plan, a backup plan for Tarmogoyf. In the way that Delve creatures, when, well not in the same way, but when you're playing a Tarmogoyf deck and you have a Delve creature like Gurmog Angler or Tassiker, the way around that is having enough mana to just hard cast them when Rest in Peace hits the board, or something similar to that, Relic of Progenitus, etc. This doesn't have to worry about that to any extent, but it does have to worry about Lightning Bolt. So, that card in and of itself is why it's so low on this list. That said, Lightning Bolt is seeing, if not historic lows in modern, pretty close to it. For a number of reasons, the metagame has shifted in such a way that Bolt isn't as good as it used to be, and Fatal Push is really getting it done right now. So, in a meta that doesn't have Lightning Bolt as much, feel free to give it a shot. Now, we have Nicolas Cage, Skin Shifter, as our next one. Isn't that, isn't that... Honorable mention of Vigo Mortensen, maybe? Okay, so this has versatility at the cost of having to leave mana open. It can be a 2-2 with Flying, or 4-4 with Trample, or an 0-8 Wall with Defender. Okay, so that versatility is all well and good. At its most, though, a 4-4, even with Trample, is still going to be smaller than Tarmogoyf gets. That said, having that versatility is worth something, to be sure, and again, you don't have to worry about graveyard hate. If you're a deck that has a bunch of mana, this might be the card for you, or if you want to be able to adapt to whatever your opponent has. Here you go. Okay, next we have Kavu Predator. I've seen this higher on some list. I rank this pretty low. Kavu Predator gets a plus one plus one counter whenever your opponent gains life. In modern, this usually means Grove of the Burn Willows. This is the closest that we have to punishing Grove, I suppose, in modern. So Grove of the Burn Willows tap to make either green or red, your opponent gains life. Well, what do you know? It, so it starts as a two, two for two, <clears throat> and it gets plus one plus one bigger. There are some effects that can make that go up more quickly, but 
just on this interaction, it gets plus one, plus one more each turn. That is too slow, but that's an easy card to splash for. There's really not much of a deck building requirement to just simply adding Grove of the Burn Willows. Plus, it is so much cheaper than Tarmogoyf, and on top of that, it has Trample, so it can at least make use of that extra size to get past Chump Blockers. So, we'll give you the next spot, but then coming in at number 7, on a similar note, is Voracious Worm. This is the other side of the table. On the turn that it enters the battlefield, it gains X plus 1 plus 1 counters, where X is the amount of life that you've gained this turn. Now, you can imagine this working in a deck that runs a ton of life gain. Typically, we think of that as being a whitelist, but for example, Selesnia Soul Sisters might have some. If you were in some ridiculous meta where Feed the Clan is a real card, yeah, okay, that could work, but even just something very simple in mono green like Radiant Fountain means it'll come in as a 4 4 for 2 mana. And Radiant Fountain doesn't require that much to splash. In a mono green list, that's easy enough. Admittedly, d this does require you to go a bit out of your way, and now we're in that section, as you can tell, of cards that may be more powerful, but require you to go out of your way in order to make them more powerful. That versatility that Tarmogoyf has is being squashed a little bit, but for example, if you were crazy enough, or in some degenerate meta where Feed the Clan is actually a card, and I, I mentioned Feed the Clan because it's so efficient, you can pick a number of cards, uh, then yes, this could be a 12-12 for 2 mana, plus the 2 from Feed the Clan. Uh, it's important to note that it enters the battlefield with. This means that if you play the actual Soul Sisters themselves, like Soul Warden or Essence Warden or Soul's Attendant, uh, they trigger afterwards. So you won't get an extra counter right then. So you can't go turn one Essence Warden into turn two uh, Voracious Worm and make it a 3-3. Three, three. I wish, but it enters the battlefield with. It isn't a trigger. I'm sorry. Um, so next, next we have one that's actually pretty flexible. This is Vine Lasher Kudzu. It has, looks like it has the same problem as Sylvan Advocate. It starts as a 1-1, one, one, and it's 2 mana. Each time a land enters the battlefield under your control, plus 1, plus 1 uh, as a counter. So, obviously, this goes, you know, it, it isn't that far out of the way to think on your next turn, or even the same turn, play a fetch land, crack the fetch land, and now you've made it a 3-3. Three, three. And it can just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And yes, you can make your deck play in such a way uh, that you can make it bigger even so. For example, Sakura Tri-Belt? Like, you, you get into the Sylvan Advocate trap where it's not Primeval Titan, and if you want to give it enough lands to make it powerful enough, you might as well be playing Primeval Titan. But I think that this one's certainly better because it can be splashed into any deck with fetch lands much more readily um, as a value Tarmogoyf. Hopefully on turn 4 it turns into a 5-5 five five with two fetch lands played afterwards. Hopefully. Uh, that isn't all that uncommon, perhaps, although it's a, not the most likely scenario either. This is definitely a budget choice. This is not Tarmogoyf. But it has the potential to be more powerful than Tarmogoyf, especially if you want to build the deck around it. For our next one, we have some of my favorites. I played these in Standard back in the day. We have Boneyard, <laughs> Boneyard Worm, whereas Tarmogoyf counts the number of card types, Boneyard Worm counts the number of creatures in your graveyard specifically. Whew. Okay, so this thing can get big really quickly. It does have a more narrow deck building constraint, but it is not that hard to get this thing bigger than a Tarmogoyf can be. The biggest a Tarmogoyf can be, notwithstanding effects that put counters on it, of course, is an 8-9, if you have all 8 types in there. There are still only 8 types, I believe, right? Let's make sure. <laughs> let's, let's count them off. No, no, we got it. Artifact, Creature, Enchantment, Instant, Land, Sorcery, Planeswalker, Tribal. Okay, cool. But this can easily get much bigger. Just imagine a deck that runs Grizzly Salvage. On its own, that's two mana, five cards in the yard, and you get a land or a creature out. Dredge creatures. Rest in peace, Golgari Grave Troll. But we still have a five dredge, a, a dredge four creature, that are still working wonders. They're still being able to be played in those dredge lists. And while this sort of card isn't as explosive as a more all-in dredge list, it gives you a huge creature that you can pump out awfully quickly to have that angle of attack, that line of attack, if you like. 
Although, of course, it loses to Graveyard Hate. That's to be expected, I suppose. But it can get very quick, very big, very quickly. It's important to note, though, one reason why this card isn't so good is that there needs to be at least one creature in the graveyard in order to even stick it on the battlefield in the first place. And that doesn't always happen by the time you get to two mana. Perhaps it isn't even usually the case that it happens. If you go turn one fetch, hand attack for instance, or a removal spell, you don't have any creatures in the yard yet, and that's what keeps this card held back. Its potential is definitely there. Our next one, along a very similar vein, is Ghoul Tree coming in at number four. Uh, I've been keeping the mana cost pretty close to actual Tarmogoyf at green and one. This is the first one that gets to deviate from that, and as you've noticed, all of these cards have been mono green, and that's because of their splash ability. I've been keeping them to that. Ghoul Tree can be anywhere from eight mana to one mana. Uh, and it's a 10-10. <laughs> it's a 10-10. Why? Yes, so this is a ridiculous card, it, along a similar vein to Boneyard Worm. At its best, it's Boneyard Worm, but usually bigger? Uh, with only 7 creatures, you get 10 power and 10 toughness out of it, so it's more efficient during that stage. Whoa! <laughs> and of course, this is harder to get rid of in a Fatal Push meta. It will never die to Lightning Bolt, or pretty much any direct damage spell. It's a biggin, as we say. And of course, it has some other neat little interactions I've tried out before, like, for example, Eldritch Evolution into something even bigger, yada yada. You get the idea. Uh, that said, once again, this dies huge to graveyard hate. Honorable mention goes to Nemesis of Mortals. A little bit less splashable and less efficient for the size. For two mana, you get a 5 5 that can later become a 10 10, so that's, that's well and good. I wish this had seen more play in standard. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. And then next we get out of this you must build around it area. We're creeping out of it. We're getting towards more general cards. We have Quirion Dryad. Now in modern this card isn't as good in large part because Gitaxian Probe has been banned and so we can't rush out in a... If Young Pyromancer goes wide, Quirion Dryad goes big. You put all of your counters on that one creature, and this gets awfully big awfully quickly. Now, admittedly, it's generally not as good. For one thing, green doesn't have... well, it has a deck building constraint, right? Green, it's going to make you splash other colors, and while that's easy enough in a Pyromancer deck, that means you must splash, you are forced to splash for Dryad. That said, this card is so powerful that before Young Pyromancer was printed, this was the Young Pyromancer of the Vintage Gush Bond decks. If you were running Gush and Fast Bond and were just storming your opponent off, this was your way to go. Died to Swords to Plowshares in a way that Pyromancer doesn't. Um, however, Pyromancer cares about instants and sorceries. This can use any card type. Okay, so. Well and good, I think that that comparison and contrasting is apt. But it's not as good as our next one, I find. Which we're going again to one that isn't exactly two mana. It, it could be. <laughs> this is Hooting Mandrels. A 4-4 four, four with Trample for one mana. <laughs> Let's face it, this is one mana. This, I think, is an awfully good comparison to Tarmogoyf. Uh, except it plays in sort of a reverse role. You'll be using up cards from your graveyard. And so it doesn't play very well with Tarmogoyf. You're not going to include the two in the same deck the vast majority of the time. That said, while it is smaller than a Tarmogoyf can get, after all, a 4-4 is smaller than a 4-5, it has Trample, and again, it doesn't die to Fatal Push, or Abrupt Decay, etc. If that sounds like a broken record, that's the meta right now. That is the meta. And of course, the usual suspects, it doesn't die to Bolt. You're seeing why Bolt isn't seeing as much play in Modern now. But my number one is the Jack of All Trades. This card is so good for so many reasons, not any one of which would make it number one on my list. Scavenging Ooze. So it's a 2-2 two, two for 2, it's right on curve, and it kind of does a little, it, it does a little bit of everything. It can remove cards from either player's graveyard, okay, that's fine, but you're using mana, so you're doing it rather slowly. Um, and it has to be green mana, you can't use colorless for it. And you gain one life, 
Okay, but it's just one. And it gets a plus one, plus one counter. Okay, but that's kind of slow. And it's pretty well splashable. Good. And it doesn't automatically lose to Graveyard. Hey, worst case scenario, it's still a 2-2. But when you put all of that together, you have a very good card. Now, green does not have a lot of great graveyard hate. And before you start putting, posting something in the comments, this is what I mean by that. Scavenging Ooze is, by a substantial margin, the best general graveyard hate card in green. There are better graveyard hate cards for green, but the trick is that they're either in the sideboard only, or they're just not as good in the main board as Scavenging Ooze. Scavenging Goose can serve as a win condition. I, I love Ground Seal when it was in Standard. I love being able to draw a card and stopping Snapcaster Mage, but you'll never beat down with... I say, you'll never. There's a Johnny out there who's typing, No, you're wrong. Here's how you do it. Okay, okay. But you get my point. Uh, Scavenging Ooze is the only card on this list, with the possible exception of Hooting Mandals, that I would legitimately consider to be more powerful than Tarmogoyf in at least a fair number of metas. If you are playing against a lot of combo decks, especially those that use the graveyard, scavenging ooze, you can you don't have to eat creatures. You can eat anything out of the graveyard. It just only gains you life and gets bigger if you eat a creature. And so you can use this to fight Storm, for instance. Uh, or you can use this to fight Dredge, or you can use this to fight whatever. <laughs> and of course it can just beat down all the time and get more powerful than Tarmogoyf while shrinking opposing Tarmogoyfs. Okay, so this is easily my favorite card on here. And of course there are other options to be sure. <laughs> there is that 4-3 elf for 2 mana that can only be cast when you, after you've cast another green spell, or is it green creature, that turn. Sorry, I want to, but it's just not as good! And I think it has trample as well, but it dies to bolt, and it actually costs more than, more than 2 mana, so... Eh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, if you have any other suggestions, if you have any other comments, feel more than free to leave them in the description below. This is not truly a budget list, not in the same way that you, I mean, these cards, cards aren't all all that cheap. Scavenging Ooze, after all, is worth well more than a dollar, which I, I consider the test for budget for individual cards. And I'm certainly not the first person to come up with this list, but that's the criteria that I use. It has to be... I'm only looking at, and yes, there are cards that could be more powerful, potentially. I'm looking at Grim Flayer has so much utility added on to it, and it fills your yard on its own, and it has some selection, and it has Trample? Okay, so that would be an instance, but you have to splash black, you're forced to. Whereas something like Tarmogoyf and Scavenging Ooze and everything else on this list, except Nemesis Immortals, even then, has to, or can be in any color combination. Alright, that's it. Take care, Magic Community, and I will see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>